okay so the agenda for today is uh, we will have a overview of fusion applications how did fusion applications come into picture and what are the different implementation options what are key terminologies key features benefits so we'll see all these things and then uh, we will also see the system navigation the basic system navigation where do you navigate where do you actually start doing the setups where are the transactional screens so all those kind of basic navigation we will see because that is very important before we actually start doing anything in the system since you are from all all the backgrounds from Siebel PeopleSoft and Fusion application basically merged the best features or good features I would say of all these ERPs. EBS was their existing ERP and it took some of the features from PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, Siebel and it merged and that's how they named it as Fusion, Fusion of multiple ERPs into one. And this Fusion has a Fusion middleware framework in between which has a lot of different services that it offers for it can be for the reporting purpose they integrated BI business intelligence they uh, in integrated a Hyperion database the sbase cube we will discuss that in detail and for role management for security they have Oracle identity management and they have ICS for integration cloud services Java as a service ADF application development for, uh, framework which is used to build the screens uh, all, all these things and then we have embedded analytics so all all throughout this fusion application you will see there are a lot of <coughs> embedded analytics within which are already created you have a lot of dashboards which are available and those are not just uh, dashboards which are just displaying any figures so you can even drill down to so if uh, anything requires your attention any invoices pending for approval or anything which is errored out you can also drill down do to those transactions so all throughout your screens whether it is procurement screen sourcing screen your supplier portal your payable screen receivable screen it will have a lot of embedded analytics all throughout the application I think everyone must be aware of this so to implement the Oracle application uh, we need all these things we need servers we need storage we need VMs virtual machines operating systems you need definitely need the database and then you need the middleware where all the different services are running <coughs> and then finally we have the application now you can see this gray box which says not required on cloud this doesn't mean that all these things are not there on cloud it's just you do not have to manage it so when a client buys the licenses for Oracle Fusion they do not have to manage any of this whether it is server storage virtual machines operating systems databases middleware all of these components are managed by Oracle itself it is as simple as you use a website you just enter the URL and you are using a website so behind the scene you do not have access to any of this so all, all of this is maintained by Oracle and we have different implementation options so now what is this this is a SaaS platform so this happens in your software as a service we have two other implementation options that is platform as a service and IAAS stands for infrastructure as a service so when when people say cloud versus on-prem on-prem versus cloud they often get confused what what do they mean by on-premise versus cloud so SaaS, PaaS and IaaS all three are cloud models so all of these three are cloud models it is just the different offerings that Oracle provides it depends on your business requirement what kind of solution you want to implement in generally what I have seen and what happens in market is mostly people go for SaaS implementations software as a service there are very few who go for platform as a service or infrastructure as a service it depends again it depends on your business requirement and uh, on-premise solutions are now not available I'm not sure if you people already know it 
I mean to say that release nine was the uh, last version, which was like three three years to three years ago. Uh, that version was available on premise. On premise means the Oracle used to provide a uh, installable. Uh, you can install it in your own virtual machine in your own servers, so you can install it. But now Oracle does not even provide the installable. You cannot install it. The only option is to go for cloud. Okay. So then you have two other offerings: platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. So what is the difference between uh, these two? Is in in platform as a service, in software as a service, you just get ready-made application to be used, and obviously it has to be implemented by us. The implementers have to configure the setups and then. Uh, it would be available, but you do not have to maintain any of those uh, installations or servers or anything. In platform as a service, what you get as a offering is it involves your tools and services to develop and deploy the application. So in PaaS, uh, you get all those uh, pillars that are not available in the software as a service, like for example Java as a service, or if you want to customize or develop custom pages. Then you have an option for uh, taking the ADF as a service application development framework, which is like soon going to change. They are going to move the pages to a different technology now. But till now, the pages have been developed using ADF, and uh, so ADF or any of these things which you want to customize, you get the access to those platforms. And infrastructure as a service is basically. You get the blank servers, and you can install and play around with the servers or anything you want to do. So these are the three different options that you can avail. So, so in the platform as a service, like uh, what is missing from the software as a service? Because in software as a service, you have the whole stack, but in platform as a service, like what is missing? Because they are still going to manage no, you, the it, infrastructure. It is not missing. It is uh, uh, extra things. Add an addition to the software as a service that you get, because see, uh, when you take software as a service as an offering, you do not get access to the middleware components, which are the different pillars. Like, uh, if you used to develop pages in EBS, you use the Java forms and OAF technology, right? You need that platform to build the pages. But in SaaS offering, you will not get that platform, even that platform to build the pages. But in platform as a service, these are different offerings. For everything, you have to take the license, whichever offering you require, whether it is Java as a service or the ADF or whatever you want to customize or you want to build on top of it. Like ADF is used for building the custom pages. So when you take ADF as a service, how it will communicate with SaaS is on a particular uh, place you will build those custom pages. Like in in the PO screen, you cannot have additional fields, or you want to customize the PO screen completely. What you will do is you will build those pages using the PaaS application, and you will give a button on the PO screen in the SaaS. So once you click on that, it will automatically take you to the PaaS screen, and you will not even know that it is where it is actually built. So end users will not know anything. What is behind? The, what is there behind the scene? So platform as a service gives you the platform where you can customize and build on top of the SaaS applications. Okay. While mm -hmm. infrastructure as a service, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, so you are building on top of SaaS. That is what, right? Right. Right. And right. in so the entire, you will entire... have everything what is there in the SaaS. SaaS is basically all your uh, modules and everything which is available. Okay. So Ashish, did you say that uh, that IAAS is a superset <laughs> for both SaaS and PaaS? Right, right. So basically, yeah, I'll explain that. So in IaaS, you get the infrastructure. So the only difference is like between the on-premise and infrastructure as a services. In on-premise, you have to buy your own servers. You have to, and there are like high-end service uh, servers required, like extra data and extra services, like. So those those kind of services servers are required for fusion applications, and you have to buy those servers 
install your you need your system administrators you need your database administrators uh, like the DBAs and all who will install the application for you but in infrastructure as a service Oracle gives you those system administrators and DBAs acts like as a service so you get the servers it is just on Oracle's premise okay uh, so these are the different pillars or offerings uh, that Oracle provides like fusion CRM uh, customer relationship management, project portfolio management, fusion procurement, uh, human capital management, supply chain management. So our area of interest are these two modules for these trainings like fusion procurement, the order management as well. So which is a part of supply chain management offering. So in supply chain management you have all these cost management, global order promising, uh, logistics, manufacturing, distributed order orchestration, while procurement has these offerings, purchasing, self-service procurement, sourcing, procurement contracts, supplier portal and supplier qualification. So we will be covering all these modules and a bit basics of procurement contracts, we will not go into detail of procurement contracts. And then we have uh, in, in the financial Ashish. pillars. So basically, uh, in procurement also, you you have an option to go for these offerings. Like if you do not, you want to want buy purchasing, you don't want supplier portal supplier qualification. So you can opt out of these offerings. You can just pay for purchasing, self service procurement, and sourcing. So in and procurement, procurement side, these these modules are separately licensed. In financials. Uh, you do not have an option to go for either payables or receivables. In financial, it comes as a group. Oh, okay. So in financial as a group, and if I wanted to say, for example, a requirement is just for purchasing, so I just can't go and implement purchasing alone. I, I it goes without saying that I need to have the Oracle Fusion Financial Management first bought, and then I can add purchasing. No, no. Is that you, the way you can, you can, uh, you can buy the purchasing. You can buy only purchasing. Because they are without, fi without finance, without finance. So what it okay. will happen is you still have access to the basic uh, setup configuration, like basic enterprise structure. Because without enterprise structure, you cannot configure anything oh. in the system. Yeah, that's why my question was that I need to finance. But you say that I don't have to buy a full-fledged finance, but there will be some skeleton bones, the bare minimum things which is a can, can be part which of is the required, which is required. Okay. Correct. Yeah, which includes like GL and like your legal entity and all those kind of things. Correct, exactly. Oh. Procurement, it is purchasing, self-service procurement, sourcing, yeah. and like separate all every each of these six are separately licensed. But in financials, all of this is like one license. So this is the licensing uh, document, not the latest one. It is little old, 2017, but you will get a idea of it. So this is the financial pillar. You have. Uh, Fusion Accounting Hub and you can see the matrix so there can be different matrix it can be a application user or the number of employees or the number of lines getting pushed like for example fusion expenses is not on the basis of the application users but <clears throat> on the number of basis of expense reports so they charge hmm. you on the basis of expense reports how many expense reports are being imported or if it is auto, this keeps on changing from time to time. I'm not sure the latest mm -hmm. one uh, what they have changed, but th this can be changed if, if uh, like the licensing parts change. Like for example, automated invoice processing. So they have uh, OCR technology, like they can scan the invoices, which is called mm -hmm. an invoice imaging solution. So mm -hmm. those invoices are automatically created, and those are charged by 1K invoice lines. So even if I bought Oracle Fusion Financials under which all the listed whatever you have like seven or eight subheadings, everything I have bought it, still my billing will be different for each and every sub component under the financials. I don't have one single no, rate for no, no, no. Oracle. Still, still it will not be different. These are different offerings. Like for mm -hmm. example, you are creating and like you are creating the invoices manually, no additional cost. Mm -hmm. You are integrating your invoices from a third party system, no additional cost. But for example, you there is a another uh, offering that Oracle gives that is a, that is a solution invoice imaging solution. So there, okay, you can scan your invoices, whatever you receive from your suppliers, you can scan those and send it 
towards this designated email address automatically those invoices will get created in the system you do not have to enter okay. it manually or anything so that okay. is that is that's that is in addition to the rfp fusion financial if you are using that share service kind of image processing then that latent kick in exactly exactly and there it is not only oracle's invoice imaging solution that is available in market there are other solutions that are available so you can use those as yep. well and not pay for this okay so so basically yeah. and when you buy the license for financials it is mandatory to go with financial reporting center so these two these two financials and financial reporting center comes together okay so I think because so. without reporting financials cannot work so these two are together always whenever we buy the licenses and then in fusion procurement you can see you have fusion procurement contracts which is all these are application user based minimum you have to buy five user licenses and so for purchasing it is a separately licensed and then you can option for supplier portal and sourcing and then you have supplier qualification management self service procurement so all these are separately licensed so in this like okay. we have to we have to pay for the component license price plus what is the software update license and support that is also mandatory or it is optional it is mandatory <laughs> without update we cannot work so it is mandatory okay so you are saying the component list price as well as the software update license and support those are mandatory exactly exactly okay